Welcome to our kitchen. Today we prepare a very simple and flavorful sweet from the Racuquinaria. We start with the ingredients. We need durum wheat flour, milk, honey and black pepper. First we make a pulse with milk and flour. We cook the flour for about 15 minutes, stirring almost all the time and adding more flour or more milk if the pulse is too soft or too hard. You can start with 150 grams of flour for each liter of milk. Pay attention to cook it at very low heat since it has the tendency to form lumps and harden very quickly. The outcome must be quite hard and difficult to stir, but it must be something that an ancient Roman would call a pulse. This isn't the common way to make a pulse, which normally was made with cereals overcooked until they break, then mixed with milk or other ingredients. We showed you how to make it in the past when we prepared the Katos Pulse Punica and the Grania Triticea, which we paired with a venison stew, and more recently to make an ancient German meal. The method for this sweet is more similar to polenta. You find the links to the videos in the description below. It's essential to use a durum wheat flour similar in Latin, because with other kinds of flour this method would not work very well. Durum with flour absorbs the liquids perfectly and becomes quite solid once cooled down. In the original text of the recipe the author recommends water or milk to make it, but he adds that with milk it would be better. This sweet is collected in the chapter of the Recoquinaria titled Tulcia Domestica, which means homemade sweets. Probably the reason is that these kinds of sweets were made directly by the cooks, whereas more complex recipes such as Placenta or Savillum were habitually prepared by specialized bakers. As we read in other sources, for example, Marshall's poems. We prepared in the past other sweets from this chapter, such as Ova Sponja. You find them as well as Placenta and Savillum among the links in the description below. While the pulse cools a bit, we grind the black pepper. Pepper is very common in the preparation of ancient Roman and Greek sweets. Its function is to give aromatic complexity with a bit of spiciness to the plates. Don't exaggerate with the quantity not to overpower the sweet, remembering that in any case its flavor will be balanced by the final addition of honey on top. The author doesn't specify which kind of pepper to use but black pepper, which was the most common and less expensive in the antiquity, pairs perfectly with the other flavors. To know more about ancient Roman food, check out our new book, Ancient Roman Cooking, available in English and Italian on Amazon, in both the print and ebook edition. You find more information about historical cuisine on our Patreon page, in which we publish once a week a new article about the history of food and once a month the translation of a historical source. To help us make new videos, you can also buy us a beer or purchase our merchandise. Then, before the pools cools down completely, we flatten it with our hands, or if you want it smoother, you can use a spoon. The author writes to cut them quasi ad dulcia, as they were sweets, giving a direction about the shape not exactly clear. 
we chose to cut the pools into small squares or rectangles. We don't need a precise or clean cut when we we'll fry them, the squares will rise a little and change shape anyway. We fry the dulce in olive oil for about 5 minutes. According to the author, we must use oleum optimum to fry the dulce, which means excellent extra virgin olive oil obtained from the first squeezing of the olives, picked by hand, according to Pliny, Cato, Columella and other authors. Olive oil, as you have seen in our previous videos, is the favorite cooking fat in ancient Roman high-end cuisine, whereas we find lard or cured pork fat back in the plebeian recipes. For example, some described by Cato or Horace. This is completely different from the Middle Ages, in which olive oil is used less, habitually in the recipes for the lean days. However, even in the Middle Ages, oil was used to make sweets, as we have seen recently preparing apple fritters. To know more about how ancient Romans prepared olive oil and find information about cured pork fatback in ancient Roman cooking, check out our Patreon page. To make these sweets, use the kind of honey you want, remembering that Romans appreciated particularly the ones obtained with thyme, oregano, rosemary and savory flowers, as Columella writes. Dioscorides provides an interesting description of the best kind of honey. It must be sweet and intense, fragrant, pale yellow colored and quite firm. Habitually honey for historical cuisine was formed. According to Dioscorides, it is the best way to use honey. We serve the dulce coated with honey and dusted with black pepper. These dulce are incredibly tasty, despite the simplicity of the ingredients. The internal part remains completely soft while still hot, and melts in your mouth, with an external crust crispy and intensely fragrant, with olive oil and honey. Slightly spicy with pepper, that gives aromatic complexity to the dulce. Hot just removed from the pan, they are delicious, but they are very good, even completely cool. A great recipe worth a try, in particular because very easy and quick to make, to experience the extraordinary variety of recipes typical of ancient Roman cuisine. If you're interested in ancient foods and flavors, subscribe our channel and consider supporting us on Patreon.